day would go by and you'd come out and you'd think, that was amazing what I heard here. And these eloquent people, you know, with these incredible educations and it was fantastic. The plaintiff's attorneys had put on an amazing case, but there was this idea, especially among those who weren't sitting in the trial every day, that when the defense started, you know, then we'll see some pretty interesting stuff too on the other side. The question now was, could the defense prove that intelligent design is a scientific theory? What evidence could they muster to support this claim? While the battle in federal court heated up, the atmosphere in Dover had gone from divisive to dangerous. Tammy Kitzmiller, the lead plaintiff in the case who had a daughter in ninth grade biology class at Dover High School, had been receiving hate mail since the start of the trial. One letter was pretty disturbing. I think this was the one with the passage that um, the last sentence, especially Madeline Murray was found murdered for taking prayer and Bible reading out of the schools, so watch out for a bullet. Um, this was a letter that I made sure my lawyers got a copy of, and it was forwarded to the FBI. Anywhere you turned, we were getting attacked. I mean, the pe people in the community were attacking us in the newspapers, people in our own profession were attacking us, saying, you know, what are you guys doing in Dover? Why are you letting this happen? People in the community were calling us atheists, which was a bit offensive to two of us in the department because two of us happened to be sons and daughters of ministers. I fail to understand how teachers can call themselves Christians, go to church, talk about God, talk about Christ, and then go to ch school five days a week and talk about Darwin and teach it as if it's fact. Not a theory, but that's how it happened. I, I don't understand that. To me, that's talking out of both sides of your mouth. Having ignited much of the controversy that resulted in the lawsuit, Bill Buckingham had made a surprise announcement. Citing poor health and struggles with OxyContin as a result of surgery, he resigned from the school board and moved out of state. A school board election was only months away, and now eight of the nine seats would be up for grabs, putting intelligent design on trial in the voting booth as well as the courtroom. Dover science teacher Brian Ream, who had already moved on to another school system, had thrown his hat in the ring. I couldn't work for a board that was going to mandate we teach religious ideas in the science classroom. I've got kids in the district, and that's not the kind of district I want my kids going to school in. So the choice was either move the whole family or try and fix the district that we live in. We chose to fix it. But when he hit the campaign trail, Brian found himself again in the line of fire in the war on evolution. The problems that I ran into in the campaign being out door to door where people just wouldn't listen to you and just automatically judged you in advance that you're this kind of person and we're good Christians, we'd never vote for you. And they slam the door in your face for you and their windows are open and call you an FNA hole or <laughs> tell you you're just a damn atheist. Every step I take, I'm taking you. You walk my way. For the Reams, this was particularly hurtful. Both are active in their church and run a summer Bible school program. We have a neighbor, actually, who was appointed to the school board and was in support of intelligent design, and he was out campaigning and saying very negative things about our family, how we're atheists, and if you vote for those atheists, well, then God's not going to be happy with you. We are members of the same body, serving the Lord. To make the case for intelligent design, the defense had lined up eight expert witnesses, including several members of the Discovery Institute, the Seattle organization that promotes intelligent design. But of those eight witnesses, five never testified. Witnesses um, started dropping like flies. We still haven't heard a complete explanation of uh, why this happened, but there was some dispute going on between the Discovery Institute and the Thomas More Law Center over how the case would be run. Nova made repeated requests to interview members of the Discovery Institute to talk about this and other issues. But the Institute set conditions that were inconsistent with normal journalistic practice. 
For the defense to win, however, did not require a large number of witnesses. Our aim was not really to disprove Darwin's theory of evolution. Our aim was to merely show that there are credible scientists who believe that the empirical data was supportive of intelligent design. That's all we had to show. It was our thinking, if they could prove that there was a scientific basis for intelligent design, that it would be possible that the court could conclude that there was a valid secular purpose for teaching intelligent design. I think everybody was waiting to see whether or not the intelligent design folks had a case. But by the time we finished presenting our case, um, I think the, the, it was pretty clear that everything rested on Michael Behe's testimony. A scientist and senior fellow at the Discovery Institute, Michael Behe is the author of the popular intelligent design book, Darwin's Black Box, and dozens of papers unrelated to intelligent design published in peer-reviewed science journals. Behe refused multiple invitations from NOVA to be interviewed for this program, though he went on record in the trial. Dr. Behe, what is your profession? I am a professor in the Department of Biological Sciences at Lehigh University in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. And you're a biochemist? And that's correct, yes. How long have you taught at the college level? Uh, for 23 years. Sir, what is intelligent design? Intelligent design is a scientific theory that proposes that some aspects of life are best explained as the result of design and that the strong appearance of design in life is real and not just apparent. Is intelligent design based on any religious beliefs or convictions? No, it isn't. What is it based on? It is based entirely on observable, empirical, physical evidence from nature, plus logical inferences. Now, when you use the term design, what do you mean? Well, I discuss this in my book, Darwin's Black Box, and a short description of design is shown in this quotation from chapter 9. Quote, what is design? Design is simply the purposeful arrangement of parts. When we perceive that parts have been arranged to fulfill a purpose, that's when we infer design. End quote. Part of the defense strategy would be to show the judge examples of biological systems they claimed were too complex to have evolved by natural selection, and therefore must have been yes. the product of a designer. Can you give us a biochemical example of design, Dr. Behe? Yes, uh, that's on the next slide. I think the best, well, the most visually striking example of design is something called the bacterial flagellum. Now, th this is a figure of a bacterial flagellum taken from a textbook, which is widely used in colleges and universities around the country. The bacterial flagellum is quite literally an outboard motor that bacteria use to swim. And in order to accomplish that function, it has a number of parts which are ordered to that effect. Now, this part here, which is labeled the filament, is actually the propeller of the bacterial flagellum. The motor is actually a rotary motor. And most people who see this and have the function explained to them quickly realize that these parts are ordered for a purpose and therefore bespeak design. Under the microscope, Bacteria powered by flagella seem almost acrobatic. They tumble, corkscrew, and pirouette, thanks to that whip-like filament. Driving this propeller is a tiny motor, part of a complex structure made of about 40 different kinds of proteins. The bacterial flagellum looks like a sort of Jules Verne notion of what the future looks like. It has a strange sort of mechanical quality to it, these sort of cogs and waving tails and stuff. And according to Behe, if any one of these parts is missing from the system, the motor can't function. Behe calls systems like this irreducibly complex, a term he coined. And he argues such systems could not have evolved naturally. The idea is that there are certain aspects of life, uh, perhaps uh, organisms or organs or even cells, that in a sense um, could only have uh, come about as a whole. In other words, it was very unlikely they could have come about through just a kind of uh, contingent combination.